What does it mean to sail under a flag? On land, all kinds of flags flutter over us, but at sea, you sail under a particular flag. The origin of this probably goes back to the age of discovery, when it was important to know whether other vessels you met on the high seas of the world were friends or enemies. But today, the flag on a ship is like the registration plate on a car. Without it, you can't sail the seven seas. For most non-commercial sailors, like freshwater boaters on Switzerland's lakes, the flag shows the nationality of whoever owns the boat. But for the merchant marine, there's more to it than that. Apart from the nationality of the owner or the shipping company, the ship may fly what's called a flag of convenience. And that's what counts from a legal point of view. A flag of convenience is a fictional nationality, which usually allows the ship owner not to be compliant with his own country's legislation, to pay less or even no tax, and deal with his crew without all the constraints of labour law. This practice dates back from a dark period in history, the slave trade. The Portuguese, who claimed to be the first European country to abolish slavery, in fact allowed their slavers to keep on sailing, but under the Brazilian flag. Today, the main providers of flags of convenience are Panama, Liberia and the Marshall Islands, which together provide 45% of all convenience flags. These are countries which, as a rule, don't seem to care who's flying their flag or why. Their names are associated with some of the worst cases of marine pollution in history. But now, after Gibraltar, Panama has withdrawn its flag from the Aquarius ship. The reasons given are, it affects international interests, and it was registered as a research vessel, not a rescue vessel. This means it can locate shipwrecked migrants, pass the information on to the authorities, but not intervene to save them. So flags of convenience are fine for supertankers, but not for humanitarians.